Good day, listeners, and welcome to another edition of Turf Talk. I'm Rinsley Alice, Michael Kane, and I'm here to take you through a preview of the upcoming Nine Race Card. That's going to be on show at Kimmel's Park on Saturday, the 10th of February, 2024. The feature is going to be the Lloyd Lindbergh Lindy de la Pena Memorial Trophy that will be raised number seven in the card. Perhaps 1.25 million in the field of eight, and they go a distance of 1600 meters, eight furlongs, or a mile league. Secondary feature is going to be the Mercury Sprint that will be raised number five. Seven horses will go a thousand meters straight. It's a Colton and Gellins. It's a maiden special rated contest. The purse deal one million and fifty thousand. First post is at high noon. Let's hit the ground running as we always do on the number one horse racing preview show. The opening contest starts at Reggae Six and catch nine Reggae Six jackpot just under twelve million. And please note that it will be mandatory payout on Ash Wednesday. That's going to be the fourteenth of February. Ash Wednesday will be mandatory payout in the Reggae Six. So it's the last chance for you to hit the jackpot on Saturday. Catch nine will have a mandatory payout. On Saturday, minimum guarantee paid $1 million, and that's going to be a big ticket item on the card as well. Race number one is for five years and up, an optional claiming contest, 180000 to 150000 and they go 1,000 meters round, the purse 600000 My best four for the Omen contest includes three, Storm Valley, four, Stein Stallone, six, Matriarch, and seven, Galloway Bay, three, four, six, and seven are my best four. Number three, Storm Valley, better than this group, and uh, do, do, back down to 180 now. And there was a huge riding for Trainer Delaware Wisdom. This one last race on the 15th of October when well beaten at 400,000 by Custer Bowl Sammy and Duke of Springs. Storm Valley, if sound enough, I should brush these aside. Matriarch number six, a consistent sort, uh, usually runs at honest race and always goes home earning a share. Should be no different this time around with Matriarch, Romana Pay riding for Cashbrook, Key Walsing and Galway Bay. Still a maiden after 35 attempts, but led for a long way last time out. Whip fell. And uh, was served by three and a quarter lengths in the end after being seven lengths clear at the front pole. Omar Walker places Roger Leho in the saddle for turning the plumber. Let's see if Galway Bay I can run another interesting race. Number four, Sly Stallone, well beaten on last, coming off the break of some six months or seven months, beaten by Sabina and company. Maybe Sly Stallone can run a lot better here. Gonna go three seven, make that three six seven and four, three six seven and four. My order of preference for race number one. Storm Valley to get the better of me, Tra Galway Bay and Slice Taloon. Race number two is next. We start our play spot eight here. One point three nine million in that single in a bonus and the quick four begins in race two as well. One point two eight million plus in that single in a bonus and they both have a minimum guarantee period of a quarter of a million. A small field of five. They clear to go post as they go one mile. It's a restricted allowance three for native bread five and up nuns of four and in is five years and up None of winners of three. The purse is 800,000. Already a small field of five and we have a non-runner. Take out number four, Prissy. Number four, Prissy. Scratch out of race number two. So we're down to a field of four. And Provocativa number two. What can I say about this one? Went off at one to five on debut. Local debut that is. At overnight allowance. Beaten by a gift from Ben Milos and God of Love in 106, 4 for 5 and a half furlongs. Comes down from 57 kilos to 52.5 kilos. The actual allotted weight. Racing fans was 49.5 kilos. So I'm wondering what kind of handicapping was done for Provocativa to get 49.5 kilos stepping down from overnight to restricted company. It's amazing. This provo- Provocativa uh, will not lose. Uh, whiskey should definitely run on the farewell. It's only a field of four, so uh, they can't do worse than fourth here. So they should all go home earning a share. So we're taking number two Provocativa. For second, make it number five, Tigre Express. For third, number one, Whiskey. And for fourth, number three, Traditional Lady. So it's going to be two, five, one, three. Let's hope we can get it in the bullseye for the second event. Shamar Muir was aboard Provocative on debut. It's now British Roman, joint leading rider at 13 wins apiece with Tevin Foster. It should be a certain victory here for British Roman to go ahead. In the jockey standing. Race number three is next. So we'll start our early pick five here. The Roman guarantee paid a quarter of a million, 378,000 plus in that single with a bonus. A field of seven will go 1500 meters. It's an optional claiming contest. 550 to 450,000 claiming spread. The purse, 820,000. My best four here. One pretty girl. Four, Zabertone. Five, mind that cat. And seven, Classical Orb, one, four, five, and seven. That's where we'll go in race number three. Number four, Zabertone, returned to winning wins on last, has proven himself to be better than the average 550 claimer. And looking around the field here, not seeing anything uh, that's uh, much better than the average 550 claimer. Even though, mind that cat steps down from 750, Shibumo also steps down from 750. And uh, we have the likes of 
Classical Orb, who was beaten at 750 last time out, and Pretty Girl, who steps in from restricted non-winners of four. So, things are shaping up well. Once again, for Zabertone, and rather Roman maintains the mount, he could very well have a quick double here in races two and three. Mind that cat, four by seven and a quarter, then two start back at 750, so down to 550 now. Marshall Porter riding for Joseph Durant, more popular known as Chalice. Look for Mind that cat at a run of fairly encouraging race here. And Shaboom, down to seven, from 750 as well, failed to finish last time out, but if she sounded off, she could be a factor throughout. And Classical Orb with Everton's Scary Miller, also known as Killer Miller, riding for Ralph Porter. This one also has prospects of fighting out the finish. Take it number four, it's Aberton. Take it the better of number five, mind that cat. Then seven, Classical Orb. And one, Pretty Girl. Haven't heard from Dr. Paulette as yet. Haven't heard from Marshall from Purple Island as yet. So going solo and giving you the tips on Turf Talk for the Saturday card. Hopefully, we'll hear from them before first post come race day. Race number four is next. We start the Twilight Six here. Minimum guarantee PL is 2.75 million. We have a field of six. They go a thousand meters straight. It's a restricted stakes contest for importers, fields and up numbers of three. And native breads, fields and four years numbers of four. The purse 1.19 million. Of the field of six, two, three, four and six are my best four. Legit Boss, Bunny Market, Rejected Roger and Noah Blair. Legit Boss, beaten on NASA, even money by me, loss, acknowledge me and Money Market. That was at five and a half four rounds. Now, reverts to the straight course. Has never been really proven over the straight. Radish Roman on another live mount, and he could very well have multiple wins on the card. He's riding for his apprentice master, Anthony Baba Nunes. Number three is Money Market. This one was third in that same Milos Acknowledge Me contest. Went over at eight to five, and was a bit outsped, a lot weight to most of the contenders there with 56 kilos. This time around, we'll be carrying 56 kilos again. Join top weight with Norblar. Look for Money Market, who runs well over the straight, second by less than three quarters behind Captain Canico in September last year. A similar effort. Could very well get the job done. Rejected Raja, former co-track record holder for the 900 meter straight distance. That has been erased. And uh, Shayla V, the last horse to equal that track record. So Rejected Raja has the visor fitted for the first time by trainer Robert Pearson. Robert Haldine will be aboard. So Robert teams up with Robert. Let's see if Rejected Raja can Get close at the finish here. Should get a strong pace to chase here with the likes of Legit Boss and Money Market in front. And volatility will be a part of the piece as well. So rejected Raja will have no complaints inside the final four and a half. No blar, vast improved so third by two and a half and so last behind last year's Dabu in ability. Back here now, not proven over the straight course. Tevin Foster picks up the mount for Gresham Smith. Figure it fitted. Let's see how fast No Blair will come onto the quarter pole. If he comes on the quarter pole in top stride, he could very well. Be close enough to the leaders, legit boss and money market, and he could very well run them down in deep stretch. Three, two, four, and six. That's where we're going in race number four. Money market over legit boss, rejected Raja, and no blar. Race five is next. It's a Mercury Sprint. We have a field of seven. They go a thousand meters straight. A maiden special event for native bread throws, Colts and Geldins. The purse one hundred and fifty thousand. And we have a field of seven of the field of seven. There are four debutants, namely. D-Bay Machine, number three, Papi Don, number four, The General, number six, and Teflon Don, number seven. And the Teflon Don, you know the, who's the Teflon Don? A man named John Gotti, the real Teflon Don. And uh, in the history of the Teflon Don, there were no cases that could have been st- stuck on the Don. The Teflon Don, he always got off the cases, always got off the cases, John Gotti. But when it came down, to tax evasion. <laughs> he was unable to get away from that case. So he is popularly known as the Teflon Don. And here is the Teflon Don. At Cameron's Park, a three-old big colt by a casual chick out of the even the score dam. The lady scored. Better ever make that Orange Valley Estates Limited. Elizabeth Acosta, the owner, her son, Jason Acosta, the champion trainer. He is in charge of Teflon Don and Robert Halliday will be aboard. First time day six to be administered. Teflon Don worked five and a half four on the 1084 by 1024 on the 27th of January and on the 20th of January five four on street in 101 flat by 47 flat and on the 13th of January five street in 102 flat by 46 three. So Teflon Don has worked like a well oiled machine for his debut and he should get the job done in a Mercury Sprint. They can't stick any case on this one. He's going to be a winner. <laughs> First time of asking. Number six is General. Another debutant. He's a three-year-old big coat by Northern Jan out of the distorted damn Mama Blossom. Brett Aston Marsh. This one trained by Gary Sobrati. Dean Dawkins is aboard. Lacing for the first time. 57 kilos of weight. The General has looked fairly fluent in the mornings and he should run. 
and encouraging race. First time of asking. D-Bay Machine number three. A three-old chestnut coat by Tapilu out of the traditional dam. Lady Lane, Brad Donovan Plummer, old Elizabeth Acosta and Wayne Henry Train, Jason Acosta, Ray and Lucy are going to be aboard. This one hasn't done anything great at exercise, but should uh, be uh, on the premises throughout. And Papadon number four, a three will be caught by Sensational Slam out of the Western Classic Dam, Sparkle Michaela, so he's bred for speed. Brad Michael Kennedy owned Lawrence McKinney and Sacklin Roman, the trainer Daniel Thompson, the rider. Papadon is expected to run prominently in the throat. Of the ones we have seen already, Warrior Stomp getting on, getting out there and getting closer. Third, two sides back behind Lord Caesar. Last time out second behind first grandson. So look for Warrior Stomp, who's on the upgrade for trainer Alfred Davidson to be in the thick of things. Roger Hewitt maintains a bump for the six on second of occasion. The figure has now been fitted. Number four is Bold Shadow. Tevin Foster riding for Patrick Lynch. This one quite a fancy twice. Eight to one on debut. Seven to one second time out. Hasn't done much. But note, blinkers now on. First time Lasix to be administered. Bold Shadow should very well run much better than he did on his first two appearances. Gonna go. Seven, six, two, and five. Teflon Don over the general. Nice two names of horses here. First time starter. They could run the exacta. Third, Warrior Stomp. Fourth for me is number five. Bold Shadow. Seven, six, two, and five. At this point, we're going to take our mid-program break. When we return, we have four races remaining on the Lloyd. Welcome to the program, you still Michael Kane, taking us through a preview of the upcoming nine race card Death Bruno Show at Kibana's Park on Saturday, the 10th of February, 2024. And please remember, we'll be having Wednesday racing next week. That's going to be on Ash Wednesday. Ash Wednesday, and of course, the 14th of February is also <laughs> Valentine's Day. So what are you going to do? Are you going to be celebrating the start of Lent? Or are you going to be celebrating the Valentine, you're gonna make uh, make a choice there, or well, clearly you can share the day between the two. But which one will come first? Will it be Lent or will it be Love? <laughs> That's gonna be uh, a nice uh, Ash Wednesday. I never remember Ash Wednesday falling on Valentine's Day ever. So this is gonna be a first occurrence in possibly history, or could it be uh, some? Uh, Long, long, long time ago before you and I were ever anywhere near the planet <laughs> that we had uh, the same day of Ash Wednesday and Valentine's Day. Right race number six, last triple, make that last four. That's a strike four begins here. In the sixth event, minimum guarantee payout is 500,000. That triple, of course, will start in race number seven. Race six is for 400,000 claimers. They go 1,000 meters straight. The per 790,000. My best four here includes three Chai Two Prince, five Southern Flight, seven Queen Zan, and ten Silver Fox. Three, five, seven, and ten. That's where we'll go in the sixth event. Number five Southern Flight, Philip Parton riding for Carlton Connell, more popularly known as Jerry and owner Carlton Watson of Cas Manufacturing fame. They team up here, stepping down from 550, first time of the claim, claim on New Year's Day, January the 1st, when beaten by Basilicus. So, from 550 to 400,000, Philip Parton, the aggressive rider aboard, Sudden flight should take them to the winner's enclosure. Number three, Chai 2 Prince, Speedy Sort, one easy the last time out at 250, steps up now to 400,000. First time out the claim, Radish Roman riding for Alfred Brown, rather Alfred Davidson, correction there. And uh, Chai 2 Prince clearly has the speed uh, to make the lead here. And Radish Roman rides well from in front, so he could very well have the Alfred Davidson trade. Chai 2 Prince traveling like a well oiled machine throughout. Number seven, Queen Zan also possesses speed. Chances are she'll be found wanting in deep stretch. And we have towards the outside Silver Fox, who runs well when fresh, makes his seasonal debut. 57 kilos away, then Dawkins riding in on, well, actually in without a tag. At 400,000, can't ask for anything easier for Silver Fox. And Silver Fox from this wide draw could very well fight out the finish. Also, joint top weight is Silver Fox with sudden flight. Taking number 5, Sudden Flight, just over number 10, Silver Fox. Then number 3, Chai Du Prince. And 7, Queen Zan. Race number 7 is next. It's the Lloyd Lindbergh Lindy de la Pena Memorial Trophy. And remember, many years ago, Lindy de la Pena and Dr. Paul Wright used to be the host of Turf Talk. And I came on as a guest tipster in 2008. And look where I am now. And uh really give... Uh, Great thanks there to Lindy Del Pena and uh, Dr. Paul Wright to have invited me as a guest. And they like my work. And uh, the rest is history. And now we pay respect to the late Lloyd Lindbergh, Lindy Della Pena, in race number seven 
on the nine race card. They go a mile or sixteen hundred meters or eight for on the pros one point two five million a feet of eight. Last triple starts here, minimum guarantee pale is four hundred thousand. Two, four, six, and seven are my best four. Further and beyond, baby like Dead Corner Suit and Divine Force. Divine Force won impressively last time out. Five and three quarter lengths clay in one thirty two two for seven and a half furlongs. Really showed good early promises did that did Divine Force. One by eleven lengths over seven furlongs in one twenty eight two. January twenty twenty three. One by two and three quarter lengths over a thousand meters straight in fifty nine two. April 2023 took a little bit of time to get back to winners enclosure, but apparently had setbacks along the way. That's the norm in thoroughbred racing. Devin Foster maintains about here for Filipiano D and ACK stables. I'm expecting Divine Force to deliver on early promise and could very well be on his way to the top. Number four, baby like second in the Saint Elizabeth distaff on Jamaica Cup Day last year, beat by Desert of Malibu. Hasn't gone as close since, but last time out third by three days behind within Buzz. And Sonny T and Chippy look for Baby Like with Bradish Roman in the side for Philip Fiano D. Philip Fiano D has two runners here. The anti post favorite Divine Force and Baby Like. Baby Like has the blinkers removed for this assignment. Further and beyond, former horse of the year, third by nine and a half lengths on last behind Sister and Treasure and Sonny T and Chippy. Larry Salin picks up the mount here for Donovan Hutchinson, more popular known as Dude. Visor off, look for further and beyond to run. A decent race here. And the eight corner store number six. Third last time out to Neil Star and Sensational Move. Three stars are back third by neck behind Reigns with a Neil Star. Any of those two efforts we produce here should see the eight corner stone earning his keep. Gonna go seven four two six in the Lloyd Lindbergh Lindy Della Pena Memorial Trophy. And that's Divine Force to get the better off baby like further and beyond. And the head corner stone. The seventh, the seventh event will be the feature. The eighth event is next. The penultimate. It's a restricted allowance. Five for native bred fibers and up nuns of two. And importees, five years and up maidens. They go 1400 meters or seven furlongs. The purse is 720,000. Of the 11 horses declared to go posters, I've made my best four. My quartet of interest. Two, Salud. Three, Dancing with a Cat. Four, Ahmad Ali. And six, Don Vincenzo. Two, three, four, and six. Salud. Second by a gap last time up. Beaten by Just Move In. Has good pace, and you know they say pace makes a race. Paul Francis, Ryan Darby, and Sean Connection look for saddle to before the place there. Dancing with the Cat got a lot closer last time, or well, third by half a lane, beaten by King Ear and Special Gift. Now gets a furlong longer to travel. Terrence Foster maintains a more for trainer Paul Swaby. Dancing with the Cat can step up a place in our two here, and is going to be a live contender. For the win. Ahmad Ali was second last time out on the 2nd of December. That was Mute Malde, beaten by Premier Identity. Win that day by Alan Bongo John Marad with 55 kilos. It's now going to be 51 kilos for Jordan Barrett. Blinkers on, tongue tie removed by Errol Anthony. Lickers up Sabrati. Ahmad Ali could very well have their measure. At number six, Don Vincenzo needs absolutely no introductions. He continues to prove to be extremely expensive to follow. <laughs> Bob Tatilla, each time Don Vincenzo comes to the card, I have to just laugh and say, well, he look like him have a chance, you know. He look like him can't really win this time. And I always handicap him in my top three or four. Sometimes I give him the vote to win. But I tell you, Don Vincenzo is not very friendly <laughs> when it comes on to winning. Uh, let's see if Philip Archen can get him to deliver on long-time expectations at this non reserve 2 level. Taking number four, Ahmad Ali. To get the better of number three, dancing with the cat. Then six, the infamous Don Vincenzo. <laughs> and uh, two, Salud. The ninth and final event will close the curtains with a field of 13. They go 12 meters or 6 furlongs. It's a maiden condition race for native bred foils and up the per 730,000. Of the field of 13, I've narrowed it down to 3. He's a lion. 6, Veliki Vicky. 7, Cosmic Force. And 9, Zane's Princess. 3, 6, 7, and 9. The one I like on top is number 7, Cosmic Force. Tevin Foster for Ryan Dabby and ACK Stables. And we see ACK Stables with Divine Force in the 7th event. And we see them have cosmic force here in the ninth event. So look for the forces to be with you in these two races and cosmic force. Fifth by four and a half lengths last time out behind Great Commander and Earth Girl. Went off a three to two, two starter back. Didn't do anything. Let's hope that cosmic force will run as well as he did last time out on the 2nd of December. Number three, he's a lion. The lone five year old in the lineup. Fifth last time out by nine lengths among. 250 claimers that was at multiple winners. Now, back among maidens, Trevor Simpson or the aka Slicer, also known as Slice Bread, Dope Dop Slicer Simpson, has been called to ride by Owen Sharp and Owen and Solomon Sharp. Of course, Solomon Sharp, Chairman, 
Supreme Ventures Racing and Entertainment Limited. He just loves to lead in his charges when they win. And Sabina was the last time he had a winner. So he's a lamb. He's going to be looking to follow through on Sabina. Number six, Veliki Vicky. Samantha Fetcher riding for Ron Matthew. This one, clearly, uh, should be fitter for this. Four, make that three fourth place finishes. The last three outings. So, Getting fitter and fitter with each run, Veliki Vicky could very well fight out the finish here. And number nine, Zane's Princess, where the huge ride in for trainer Barrington Bernard. Second, last two outings, both efforts came over the straight. Now comes around the bend at six furlongs. If able to carry through the run around the bend, Zane's Princess could fight out the finish. But according to her past performances here, she runs her best races over the straight. When she comes around the bend, it's a totally different Zane's Princess, especially inside the final front and a half. So while I'm expecting her to be prominent throughout, when they turn for home, she may be found wanting. Take in number seven, Cosmic Force. To get the better of number three, he's the lion. Then six, Veliki Vicky. And nine, Zane's Princess. That's my idea of the possible outcomes of our nine races we run at Cape Manus Park on Saturday, the 10th of February, 2024. And please note that we will be having... Ash Wednesday Racing, right here on your favorite radio station for horse racing. I'm your sound Michael Kane, on behalf of our studio engineer, Richard Catanis, more popular known as DJ Cat, until it's time for live racing from Cayman's Park, first post, high noon. Goodbye for now.